Buying the correct mask or respirator can be a bit of a challenge, especially when it comes to understanding all the terms that come along with these types of products. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of the terms and types so that you can be confident in purchasing what's right for you. Well, as you can see, there are a lot of different styles of masks out there. and We're going to cover each one of these throughout today's video. But the first thing we need to talk about is the difference between a dust mask and a respirator. Dust masks generally only have one strap and don't always fit tightly around the mouth and nose. These masks are designed to stop aerosols, which are both solid and liquid particles from coming out of the wearer's mouth. However, they provide little to no protection from the air that you're breathing in. The other big difference between a mask and a respirator is that the mask is not NIOSH approved. NIOSH stands for the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, and I'll get into what they do later on. Bottom line, most professionals think that these dust masks are useless, and I have to agree. A respirator, on the other hand, is certified by NIOSH and generally has two straps which allows the mask to fit snugly around the user's face. When worn correctly, this style of respirator does a great job at filtering out fine particles like sawdust. However, all of these disposable masks, or sometimes called paper masks, do not filter out organic vapors, which are very harmful to breathe. But before we start talking about what gives some respirators the ability to filter out organic vapors, let's dive a little bit further into the rating letters and numbers that are associated with the filtering material itself. You may have noticed that respirators will have a letter and a number printed on the box or on the mask itself. The letter is first, and in most cases it will either be an N or a P. N stands for non-oil meaning that the material that the mask is made out of breaks down in the presence of oil aerosols. Again, aerosols can be both solid and or liquid borne particles. For example, oil aerosols can be oil-based paints, release agents, or some spray lubricants just to name a few. What this means is if you're working in an environment that has a lot of airborne aerosols, the N-type filter is not recommended. The P rating, which stands for oil proof, can be used around oil aerosols. After the letter comes a number. In most cases, that number will be a 95 or a 100. These numbers are percentages of how effective the mask material is at filtering out aerosols. A 95 is 95% effective and a 100 is 99.7% effective. There are many different methods that manufacturers utilize in order to get the filtering material to be effective at filtering out fine particles. The two most common are weave density and static electric charge. The first one takes into account how tight the fibers of the material are woven together. The tighter they are, the more effective they are at capturing smaller particles. The second method that some manufacturers use is to place a static electric charge on the filtering material itself at the factory. This is very similar to when you're at home and you scratch your feet on the carpet and then you touch a metal object or another person and get a shock. However, the static charge on the mask does not leave the mask material like when you shock someone, but it stays and is used to help attract particles. Okay, now that you understand the rating letters and numbers, it's time to quickly move on and talk about NIOSH and why they are so important. NIOSH tests and certifies the majority of the respirators on the market today. At their lab, they test particle sizes down to 0.3 microns and they test agents that can degrade the filters, like what we already talked about with oil aerosols and type N filters. They test all respirators with some sort of a salt solution or other methods to verify that the filtering material is doing its job. So far, we've only talked about disposable masks and respirators, one of which once you wear these out, you simply throw the entire mask out. But there is another option before we get down to these, and it's this right here. In more recent years, these more flexible style dust masks have made their way into the marketplace. I have two here for us to look at. One is from RZ Mask, and the other one is from Basecamp. These types of dust masks have a reusable outer part, and on the inside is where the filtering material gets installed. And once this wears out, you simply swap out 
the old inner filter for a new one. As you can see, they are both very similar and they both have a really good reputation in the DIY and professional communities. They're stylish, pretty comfortable, and do an effective job at filtering out aerosols. Keep in mind though that they are not NIOSH approved and they're still considered a dust mask. But as you can see, they are clearly nothing like the simple paper dust mask we first looked at. These types of masks do provide great overall protection as long as you buy the right size and make sure that they are fitting tightly. I do want to add that the base camp mask does provide these extra ear loops that the RZ mask does not, which, which really helps with the overall fit and comfort of the mask. And the RZ mask provides this little extra foam on the inner filter by the nose that the base camp does not, which adds comfort and provides a better seal around your nose. Next to those filters is yet another mask before we get into the more traditional style mask, which I'll call, and this one is from Trend Tools. It's made out of a non-allergenic material, including soft latex and silicone free face seals. Similar to the RZ and base camp masks, these have replaceable filters that fit inside the mask. This design is slim and more compact than a traditional half mask respirator, which gives you more vision as you're wearing it. This mask is NIOSH approved and provides a really good seal around your face. Before we get further along, let's circle back and talk about what gives some masks the ability to filter out organic vapors. This level of filtration is only possible with respirators that have activated carbon filters or cartridges. Activated carbon can remove all types of organic vapors, which are very harmful for you to breathe. Examples of products that would have organic vapors would be paint thinners, epoxies, urethanes, and of course oil-based paints and stains. As we already talked about, these paper style masks do not have activated carbon in them, nor can you get these with it. However, both the RZ and Base Camp masks do have activated carbon in the filter, which gives you some protection, not as much as a cartridge style like this, but it may provide enough protection for you. If we move over to the Trend mask, this particular model does not have the option for adding activated carbon filters. So this mask would not be good for removing organic vapors, but does a great job at removing particles. If we continue down the lineup here, we can get into what I'm calling more of the traditional looking half-faced masks that have removable cartridges. This style of mask is best for creating a very tight seal around the face because of the material itself and because of the multiple straps. I have two manufacturers represented here, MSA and 3M. Both of these are a great professional grade mask and of course the cartridges that they use are slightly different from each other. Both cartridges however clip and unclip in and out so that you can swap them out for a different style or filter type. And I have three different filters for us to look at. The first one looks less like a cartridge and more like a, I don't know, a pink pancake. This is the 3M P100 filter, which if you remember is a filter that is NIOSH rated, oil proof, 99.7% effective at filtering particles down to 0.3 microns. This filter works extremely well at sawdust and other fine particles, but what it can't do is remove organic vapors. The next filter is a MSA organic vapor cartridge, which as you guessed it, filters out harmful organic odors and vapors. 3M makes these as well, but this particular filter only removes organic vapors and does not remove particles like sawdust. And that's something you want to keep in mind when you're looking to purchase a filter. Does it remove organic vapors or sawdust or both? And the last filter we have is an example of a cartridge that has both activated carbon for removing organic vapors and a P100 filter for removing particles. Like I mentioned before, both MSA and 3M make the same cartridges, of course, just with their own unique style. Because there are so many filter cartridges to choose from, I'll leave a link down in the notes section so that you can download the PDF for both MSA and 3M filters to choose what's right for you. 
The majority of the masks and filters that we've been covering in this video are more than adequate for the majority of woodworkers out there. And when it comes to fitting or finding the one that fits best for you or the best style, it kind of comes down to more of a trial and error. I personally have always had at least two masks. I like to use my MSA mask set up for organic vapors and I use my 3M 6503QL set up with a P100 filter for all of my woodworking. Out of all my masks, I use this 6503 the most because it's lightweight, it seals 100% to my face, it's easy to breathe through, and the exhaust vent points down, which is extremely helpful. Which reminds me, we haven't yet talked about masks that have exhaust ports and masks that don't. Masks that have exhaust ports allow that hot air that you're breathing out to get out of the mask. Otherwise, that hot humid air stays in there and if you think about it, that's kind of gross. The basic dust mask in this N95 do not have an exhaust port, but this other N95 does and you can see that here. All the other masks on the table have exhaust ports. The RZ and the base camp masks do right here and the trend mask has them located here. The two half face masks have ports on the front and the other 3M has the port facing down. This makes all the difference in the performance of the mask. Having the port facing down is really important because it stops your safety glasses from fogging up when you're working really hard and expelling a lot of moisture. When it comes to knowing when your mask filters need to be changed, it really comes down to noticing particular odors and or if it's getting harder to breathe. So take note when you first put on the mask when it's new and pay close attention to how easy it is to breathe through. Or if you're using an organic filter, notice how effective it is at removing odors. When the organic filters wear out, you'll start to smell the odors that you're trying to keep out. And when the other N or P filters wear out, you will physically see them dirty and or you will notice that it's getting harder to breathe through them. Each manufacturer has its own recommendations for the length of use, so be sure to visit their website for specific details. All the masks that we talked about today are really good masks, except of course this dusk mask down here. Choosing the right style is really going to be dependent on the type of work you're doing and what you think is comfortable. Protection and comfort is key when it comes to masks and knowing which one's going to be the most comfortable for you really boils down to probably going out and purchasing a few masks and giving them a try. Bottom line, the mask has to protect you from the environment that you're in and it has to be comfortable because you need to be wearing it often. Your health depends on it. I'll leave a link to all these products down in the notes section below and if there's something that you were hoping I was going to cover in this video and I didn't, just simply ask me the question down in the comments and I'd be more than happy to help you out. If you need more specific help or would like to share some videos and photos with me, find me on Instagram. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. God bless.